Hello everyone. Today I will talk about product design and process selection. Firstly, the product design process. Certain steps are common to the development of most product designs that are idea generation, product screening, preliminary design and testing and final design. These steps are shown in this figure. Idea development. All products begin with an idea. The idea can come from anyone in the company. To remain competitive, companies must be innovative and bring out new products regularly. The first source of ideas is the customers. Competitors can be another source of ideas. Ways of using competitors' ideas can be benchmarking or reverse engineering. Benchmarking is the process of studying the practices of companies considered the best in class and comparing your company's performance against theirs. Reverse engineering is the process of disassembling a product to analyze its design features. Product screening after a product idea has been developed, it is evaluated to determine its likelihood of success. That is called product screening. These issues are addressed in the product screening scre stage. Operations What are the production needs of the proposed new product and how do they match our existing resources? Will we new need new facilities and equipment? Do we have the labor skills to make the product? Can, we, can the material for production be really obtained? Then marketing. What is the potential size of the market for the proposed new product? How much effort will be needed to develop a market for the product? And what is the long term product potential? Lastly, and the most importantly, finance. The production of a new product is a financial is investment like any other. What is the proposed new product's financial potential, cost and return of investment? This is the process of finding out the break-even quantity. Break-even analysis is a technique that can be useful when evaluating a new product. This is how we measure the total cost versus the revenue that will be earned from that product. Once a product idea has passed the screening stage, it is time to begin preliminary design and testing. At this stage, Design engineers translate general performance specifications into technical specifications. Prototypes are built and tested. Changes are made on the test results. The final design. Following extensive design testing, the product moves to the final design stage. This is where final product specifications are drawn up. The final specifications are then translated into specific processing instructions to manufacture the product, which includes selecting equipment, outlining jobs that need to be performed, identifying specific materials needed, and suppliers that will be used, and also all other aspects of organizing the process of product production. Design for manufacturer is a series of guidelines that we should follow to produce a, a product easily and profitably. These guidelines focused on two issues, design simplification and design standardization. Design simplification means reducing a number of parts and features of the product whenever possible. A simpler product is easier to make, costs less and gives higher quality. Design standardization. Design standardization refers to the use of common and interchangeable parts, 
By using interchangeable parts, we can make a greater variety of products with less inventory and significantly lower cost and provide greater flexibility. Another factor in product design is the sta stage of the life cycle of the product. Most products go, go through a series of stages of changing product demand called product life cycle. The first two stages of the life cycle can collectively be called the early stages because the product is still being improved and refined and the market is still in the process of being developed. The last two stages of this life cycle can be referred to as the later stages because here both the product and market are well defined. This is a concept that is concurrent engineering concurrent engineering is an approach that brings together multifunction teams in the early phase of the product design in order to simultaneously design the product and the process the previous over the wall approach was more problematic Remanufacturing is a concept that has been gaining increasing importance as our society becomes more environmentally conscious and focuses on recycling and eliminating wastes. Remanufacturing uses components of old products in the production of new ones. This has both environmental benefit and also cost benefit. Now we move, move on to the process flow analysis. Process flow is the sequence of steps from input to output with the goal of improving it, its design. The process flow chart has lots of components in it. The arrows represent the flows, the triangles represent decision points, the inverted triangles represent storage of goods and the rectangles represent the tasks. Here we can see the examples of the process flows. The first one is a multi-stage process. The second one is a multi-stage process with the buffers. The third one is parallel stages producing different products. Now this one is parallel stages producing the same product. There's three different strategies that a company can follow. First is make to stock strategy. It, it says that we should produce standard products and services for immediate sale or delivery. The second is assemble to order strategy. It says produce standard components that can be combined to customer specifications. And the last is make to order strategy. It says produce the products to customer specifications after the order has been placed. Let's talk about some example with pizzas. First, there are cheese pizzas made with standard ingredients with standard crust. They are the most popular items and we make them ahead of time to ensure that they are always available upon demand. This is called make to stock strategy. The second are pizzas that use a standard crust prepared ahead of time but are assembled based on specific customer requests. This is assembled to order strategy. The lastly, the pizzas are made to order based on specific customer requirements, allowing this of different types of crust and toppings. This is called make to order strategy. These are the examples of the process flow to of these three strategies. Process performance metrics. Process performance metrics measures Process performance metrics is measurement of different process characteristics that tells how a process is really performing. 
firstly let's talk about throughput time average amount of time it takes to move through the system is called throughput time the main objective of a company should be to reduce the throughput time process velocity is computed as a ratio of throughput time to value added time the closer this ratio is to 1 the lower the amount of time the product spends on non value adding activities productivity productivity is the ratio of outputs over inputs utilization utilization is used to time it is avail available for use efficiency efficiency me measures actual output relative to some standard of output now we come to the technological decisions information technology is technology that enables storage processing and communication of information within and between firms enterprise software is another powerful information technology such as enterprise resource planning ERP these are large software programs used for planning and coordinating all resources throughout the entire enterprise they allow data sharing and communication within and outside of the firm enabling collaborative decision making gps is a type of wireless technology that uses satellite transmission to communicate exact loca locations today gps has numerous business and individual applications large trucking companies use gps technology to identify the exact locations of their vehicles Farmers use GPS while riding on tractors to identify their exact location and apply the proper mix of nutrients to the correct plot of land. GPS capability is also available for personal use in handheld computers. Radio frequency identification or shortly RFID RFID is a wireless technology that uses memory chips equipped with radio antennas attached to objects used to transmit streams of data. Then automation. Automation is using machineries to perform work without human operators. Automation has the advantage of product consistency and ability to efficiently produce large amount of products. However, automation does have its disadvantages. First, automation is typically very costly. These costs can be justified only with a high volume of production. Secondly, automation is typically not flexible in accommodating product and process changes. Automated material handling. One type of device is automated guided vehicles that have a small battery ridden battery driven truck that moves materials from one location to another the agv is not operated by a human and takes its directions from either an on onboard or central computer even agvs have become more sophisticated over time the older models followed a cable that was installed under the floor the newer models follow optical paths and can go anywhere there is an aisle space even if they can avoid piles of inventory in their way but one of the biggest advantage of agvs is that they can pretty much go anywhere another type of automated material handling includes automated storage and retrieval systems which are basically automated warehouses flexible manufacturing systems Flexible manufacturing system is a type of automated system that combines the flexibility of intermittent operations with the efficiency of continuous operations. An FMS consists of group of pro computer controlled machines and or robots, automated handling devices for moving, loading and unloading and a computer control center. 
FMS knows when the machine is down to maintenance or if there is a backlog of work on a machine and it will automatically route the materials to an available machine. Robotics A robot in manufacturing is usually nothing more than a mechanical arm with a power supply and a computer control mechanism that controls the movement of the arm. The arm can be used for many tasks such as painting, welding, assembly and loading and unloading of machines. Robots are excellent for physically dangerous jobs such as working with radioactive or toxic materials. Also, robots can work 24 hours a day to produce a highly consistent product. Lastly, there is e-manufacturing. Computer-aided design is a system that uses computer graphics to design new products. Then there are computer-aided engineering and computer-aided manufacturing. Computer integrated manufacturing is a term used to describe the integration of product design, process planning and manufacturing using an integrated computer system. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.